Did you know the most common orthopedic disorder in newborn babies is developmental dysplasia of the hips? That was the diagnosis for one local family you're about to meet. Well, Lucy, who is now three years old, was born with dysplasia of the hips and has now gone through surgery to fix the position of the hip and the socket to allow for normal development, thanks to the help of UT Physicians Pediatric Orthopedic Team. And here to share Lucy's story is pediatric surgeon Dr. Munlaru, along with Lucy's parents, Amy and Matt, and of course, little brother. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having us. Okay, so this was a huge intro, doctor. Yes. And um, <laughs> let's talk about when you first met uh, Lucy and, of course, her parents when they came to you. What were some of the signs? I mean, she was quite young when you first met her, right? That's absolutely correct. She's, she was just above two years of age. Typically, this condition is picked up before three months of age, but Lucy was unique in the sense that she had both her hips with this etiology, DDH. And when both hips are not developed appropriately, it's tough to pick it up in the early stages. So when she came to us, you know, mom and dad had a sense that something wasn't correct. They had a wonderful pediatrician routed, routed her towards us, and then we got an x-ray, and then it was, lo and behold, both her hips were not developed. So not crawling, or what were some of the symptoms, mom? I mean, maybe, Amy, you can tell us, because it, when you sure. always say your parent, your mom intuition kind of knows, right? Yeah, we knew. Um, she started walking and had this adorable waddle. Um, and everyone commented, she walks so cute, so cute, little waddle. And finally, I started to ask the doctor, is that normal? Like, you know, is one leg longer than the other? Because it just, she wasn't growing out of it. Um, so they said, no, she'll grow out of it. Um, and then we noticed she had a popping in her hip when she'd sit on our lap and lean forward. We'd, we'd feel it. So I started pulling on her legs, and I did see that one was longer. Now we know it wasn't longer. It just was um, in the wrong spot. But we went to a new pediatrician who instantly referred us. To Dr. Munlaru. And Dr. Munlaru, this is a common thing. I mean, we just said is it is the most common Correct. condition. And if a parent out there is maybe experiencing or seeing some of these signs, you say it's critical that they get in sooner than later because the sooner it can be diagnosed, the more readily and easier it is to treat, right? That's absolutely correct. So the earlier the diagnosis, the less invasive the treatment options are. So before three months of age, if it's picked up, a simple harness is all you need to do to get the hips to align in the right position. Now, a subset of those patients, either if they're not picked up or the harness is not sufficient, then they have to do more invasive approaches by they meaning the medical specialists like myself, uh, such as surgery, where you have to actually directly put the ball into the socket to allow the child's hip to develop appropriately. After and that was that the case with Lucy? So in Lucy's case, because her hips were out for so long, that was necessary. So okay. what we did was we did an open approach. So we did a surgery in the crease of the hip. We got the ball, we put it exactly into the socket where it should be or it should have been. And then we also touched up the socket itself too. We actually cut the socket bone and, and nudged it in the right direction. So when kids are amazing in their resilience and their ability to sort of do things appropriately once they're nudged in the right direction. So myself and my partner, Dr. Mansur, did this procedure first on one hip and then staged it with the next side. And then she's been doing the rest herself. She's been recovering, and her, as every year goes by and every month goes by, her hips are just more and more becoming like a normal hip. It's really fascinating. I mean, we're seeing all these pictures here on so the screen cute. of the recovery and, and what was this like after surgery. I love this picture of the two of you. <laughs> Super cute. This is really interesting, doctor. This more common in females and firstborn children? That is correct. That's correct. So the thought is that females are more prone to being sensitive to the mom's estrogen. Okay. So it causes them to be potentially a little bit more ligamentously lax. So when you have laxity, then the hips are more likely to not seed into the location, which is the socket, and then sort of ride a little bit out. And that's why females have a six to one or six fold increase in incidence or occurrence of this. And then the thought with the firstborn child, it's there's not proof as to why this is the case, but the thought is that because the mom has not had a child before, the uterus is a little bit of a more constricting environment. So it may push the hips a little bit further out as opposed to subsequent children. Uh, there's and if left untreated, that can present a whole host of problems down the road, like trouble walking, pain walking. That's correct. So children are also, if they have this condition, they're not picked up in some, in some scenarios because they don't feel pain because their bone is still mostly cartilaginous. Mm. As it becomes more adult-like, you can develop pain symptoms, lack of mobility in the hip, and then in the worst case, fulminant arthritis. 
People may know out there a person that were in their 20s and 30s that had to have a hip replacement. Right. Most of these patients actually had this condition probably that went undiagnosed and developed arthritis needing the hip replacement at an earlier So stage. interesting. I mean, look at these two over here hugging and loving <laughs> on each other. Wow. I love this. So Amy and Matt, walk us through because, uh, at, of course, the surgery I'm sure was scary, but a relief to know that your gut feeling and uh, that the diagnosis is done and she's, she's growing and healing the way she should. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We were just <clears throat> so thrilled to work with the UT team and Dr. Munleru and Dr. Mansour. Um, it was just, you know, a godsend to have these two surgeons do such a wonderful job. Um, you know, it's it's a relief to know that she's not going to have any restrictions in her life moving forward. Right. You know, uh, whatever sports she wants to play or activities, she she's free to do that and absolutely. you know move forward and live a normal life. And, and these doctors gave us that. Yeah, she certainly uh, doesn't seem to be struggling with mobility today. Yeah. <laughs> no, and what a love totally bug. Yes. Lucy, how are you feeling, girl? Can you tell us? And this microphone is kind of crazy. How do, your, how do you feel after you had your surgery? Good. Good? You feel yeah. good. What kind of sports do you want to play? Are you a soccer player? No, tennis player. Tennis? <laughs> tennis player, yes. I very, love very that. Nice. And you want to be a doctor? Is that right when you grow up? Yeah. Uh-huh. That's so awesome. Well, She's beautiful. And I know, Dr. Munleru, when you were talking through the process of how this all happened and came to be, it does sound per potentially to some parents like, oh my gosh, that Super was so scary. much. Yeah. But the good news is this story has such a happy ending. And as you mentioned, I mean, she's going to be able to, Matt and Amy, play any sport, do anything in life she wants to do because of your team. No, that's so yeah. kind of you to say. I mean, this, the, Matt and Amy are the most amazing parents I've had the privilege of working with. They're such great advocates for their children. It's it's not easy. I mean, it's a long process. Yeah. I mean, it's it takes a lot of commitment. Your child's in a cast for so long, but it's worth it's worth it in the end just to see these guys be able to play and do the thing they're supposed to do best. Which is Absolutely. Yeah, this is a priceless place. moment right here. <laughs> Dr. Mundleru, Matt and Amy, Lucy and Cal, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you. Thank you. Check back in with us. We want to see you. where you go with your life. <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, yeah. <laughs> if you would like more information about dysplasia, you can visit utphysicians.com or you can call 888 4 ut docs